AV Alive with another product video. Today we're looking at the Blackmagic ATEM TV Studio. This revolutionary new product retails under $1,000, and there's been quite a few questions of how it does and does not work, and the workflow surrounding this product. AV Alive both rents and sells this revolutionary product, with rentals starting at $199 per week. What we have here is three configurations of the product, and AV Live, of course, can customize this to your exact needs. Let's take a look at each one for a brief moment. Here is a sample of a best configuration. We have a beautiful SKB 8 space rack case with a firm and power supply controlling the power on and off for holder unit with pull out lights. We have a both preview and an output monitor. We have the TV studio. We have the Behringer SRC2496 uh, converter. We have a Behringer line mixer, and then we have two wireless units. Some of the things to remember when configuring your ATM TV studio is how it handles audio. It is very important for us to handle audio in a professional manner, and that's where we're using the Behringer SRC2496. This will take XLR inputs or quarter inch and convert them to AES EBU, which easily talk to the ATM TV studio. We also have included a line mixer to mix various uh, line sources, including our two wireless units, as well as any hardwired mics or additional wires, uh, wireless mics you may have. And then of course we have the wireless units plugged into the unit. Now the purpose of a unit like this is perfect for out in the field because it gives you your preview monitor as well as your output monitor and allow you to easily uh, record to disk, you know, your, out your program output, or as well as uh, use your queuing for your multi-view. It's very important to know that the ATM TV Studio, while it records the disc in H.264 format, it cannot do H.264 and live web encoding on the same unit. You will need to break that out as a separate entity, and we'll take a look at that a little later. So this is an example of a field unit, complete, ready to go, able to do webcasting or recording anywhere you want to go. Retail on this unit is less than $5,000 and can be built again exactly to your custom config using a variety of mics, Shure, Sennheiser, Audio-Technica, etc. As well as maybe changing up the monitors to a Marshall, but for this purpose we have the Blackmagic Complete Kit working together with the Behringer. So here's an example of our good and better configurations, two again unique rack sizes. We're going to start with the good first. Basically a lot of folks already have monitors and have audio needs. Uh, this is a very typical rental. This is our $199 rental here. It basically just includes the ATM TV studio as well as the Behringer audio converter with all the appropriate cables ready to go. Perfect ready to set up for uh, people who already have monitoring and already have audio. This configuration is what we call the better configuration. This is for someone who may have audio already but wants to have a portability of a field unit as well. It includes the Furman, it includes the Blackmagic uh, uh, preview and output monitor, includes the ATM TV studio, and of course the Behringer. Again, on these, these can be configured exactly to your needs. Uh, we recommend using a high quality case like a Gator or a SKB uh, rack mount, ro roto mount type product, and easy to travel with and lightweight, can be easily checked in if it was TSA rated on the airports. So basically, these are three, three examples of the good, better, best configuration related to the ATM TV studio. Let's talk about the inputs and outputs of the ATM TV studio. Included are four HDMI inputs, four SDI HD inputs, and a clock reference in, USB 2.0 to connect to your Mac or PC, your program SDI out, two of those, as well as your multi-view SDI out, and then of course a multi-view HDMI and a program HDMI. All are hot. All your outputs are hot, so you're able to utilize those in a variety of fashions and uh, have multi-monitoring going or uh, queue monitoring or uh, set monitoring. Um, you have your switcher control, which by the way is controlled by Ethernet, and that's something we'll talk about in a second, as well as your AES EBU audio connection, which is standard BNC, and we require a BNC to RCA adapter. Of course, we have our wall wart power supply, and in the front panel there's actually nothing. So let's talk about HDMI and SDI for a second. 
HDMI, of course, can be utilized in the standard frame rates, both P and interlaced. And the basic uh, thing you need to be concerned about HDMI is cable length. HDMI cable length for full HD is really limited to about 15 feet unless you use an amplifier or an extender. So it's not ultimately cost effective to use HDMI unless the cameras are nearby. HDSDI, on the other hand, with high quality cable can go 100, 200 feet. So for creating a situation that you might have HDMI cameras, but you want to utilize that distance, one of the recommendations we make is using an HDMI to SDI converter for also from Blackmagic, which retail under $300. So there's a variety of ways to get this unit to uh, work with both HDMI and SDI. Another little trick is that because it connects via ethernet, this unit can be placed in the camera room and actually the video can be connected uh, or the control can be connected over ethernet over a long distance. So someone running the CPU power on another uh, location far from the cameras can easily control the switch and of course with monitoring over headphones and that nature can basically leave that close to the cameras if the HDMI cable length is a, dis a distance is an issue. So we talked about Ethernet and using this uh, over distance. One of the other issues is that if you're going to record H.264 to the computer, you will need two things. You will need a dedicated hard drive off the boot drive of the computer. In our case, we use a Fire FireWire 800 drive off a Mac Mini or a MacBook Pro. And then USB also has to be run the distance for order to be captured to drive. There are plenty of USB extenders out there. So in theory, to run this further away from your uh, control desk, but closer to the cameras, a USB extender and an ethernet cable of appropriate length will be required. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more content.